Now the question is, are they significantly different or can we say there is an impact of this running program? Hello friends, welcome back. The next important topic as a part of data analysis in Microsoft Excel that we are going to learn today is the parity test. This is an important concept if you want to compare the means of two samples. We are going to understand how to perform this parity test with the help of practical example in Microsoft Excel. So let's begin. This is also called as t-test paired to samples for means. Now let's first understand what is this parity test and what is the application of this. Use parity test to compare two population means with each other when the set of atoms are dependent on each other. Here the meaning of word dependent is whatever the data that we are going to collect that data is in pair. The parity test is used in following conditions. 1. To determine whether the mean of differences between two paired samples differ from 0 or in other words we can say whether they are differ from the target value. And the second application of this parity test is to calculate a range of values that is likely to include the population mean of differences. So this is the important hypothesis test used to compare two population means. As this is the part of hypothesis testing, let's understand what is the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis in case of this parity test. The null hypothesis is H0 colon mu1 is equal to mu2. That means the population mean before is equal to the population mean after. Or the population mean for the data that we have collected in the pair are equal. And there can be any one of the following alternative hypotheses. First, H1 colon mu1 is not equal to mu2. That means the population mean before does not equal the population mean after. Or it can be H1 colon mu1 is greater than mu2. The population mean before is greater than the population mean after. Or it can be H1 colon mu1 is less than mu2. We can say the population mean before is less than the population mean after. We can select any one of these alternate hypotheses along with the null hypothesis of mu1 is equal to mu2. Once we understand what is the parity test, what is the application of it and what are the hypotheses that we are following into this test, now let's understand what are the data considerations for parity test. There are five important data considerations. The first one is the data must be continuous. That means the data can be expressed in terms of fractions. Second, the sample data should not be severely skewed and the sample size should be greater than 20. This is because if the sample size is less than 20 or if the data is severely skewed, in that case we need to use the non-parametric testing. Third, the sample data should be selected randomly. And the fourth one is, which is also the characteristics of the parity test, you should have a set of paired or dependent observations, such as measurements on the same items under different conditions. And the last one is, determine an appropriate sample size. Depending on the power that you required for your parity test, you can select the appropriate sample size. In general, we are using the power of 0.95. Now let's take an example to understand how this parity test is performed and how to interpret the results. This is an example for parity test. A physiologist wants to determine whether a particular running program has an effect on the resting heart rate. In this case, the heart rates of 20 randomly selected people were measured. The people were then put on the running program and measured again one year later. Thus, each person's before and after measurements are a pair of observations. And this is the most important requirement for the parity test. You must have the observation in pairs. The physiologist performs a parity test to determine whether the heart rates differ before and after the running program. Now let's go to this data and perform this parity test in Microsoft Excel. This is the data for before and after resting heart rate for 20 patients. Now let's perform this parity test and please follow the procedure for this. Go to the data tab. In that we need to select this data analysis tab. Now the data analysis window will be open. Here please scroll down. 
and select the option for t-test. t-test paired to sample for means. As we are interested in paired t-test, so we need to select this option for paired to sample for means. So select this option and click OK. Now the paired t-test data window will be open. Here into the first section we need to provide the input. Input talks about what is the variable 1 range and what is the variable 2 range. So select this first variable 1 range and select the before data. Make a enter. After that we need to select the variable 2 range. In that case we need to select the after data and make a enter. Here in hypothesized mean difference we need to put the value at 0 because we had considered mean before is equal to mean after. Please check this option of labels because we are having the labels for these columns into the first row. Keep the default value of alpha as 0 0.05 and default output option as new worksheet plan and then click OK. Once you click on OK, we will be getting the results for t-test paired to sample for means. Here we are getting the detailed results for before and after. Now let's go into the detail to understand the interpretation of the results. As a part of these results, we got mean for both before and after scenario, variance in both the situations, what are the number of observations, Pearson correlation, hypothesis mean difference, degrees of freedom, and we got the t-statistics. Based on this t-statistics, we got both t-critical at one tail and t-critical at both tail. Based on these values, we have calculated the p-value for one tail and two tail. In this case, the mean resting heart rate was 74.5 and after the running program, it was decreased to 72.3. In earlier case, the variance was 20.37 and after the running program, it is 16.43. In both the scenarios, the number of observations are same, which was 20. In these results, we can see there is a difference between mean before and after the resting heart rate. Before it was 74.5 and after it is 72.3. Now the question is, are they significantly different or can we say there is an impact of this running program? For that purpose, we need to look at the p-value. If you look at the p-value for one tail and also for the p-value for the two tail, both of these p-values are less than 0.05. If you remember the alpha value that we have selected for performing the parity test, which was 0.05. Now both of these values are less than 0.05 so there is a significant difference between the before and after resting heart rate. This is all about PET test and with the help of this example, I'm sure that you have got the complete clarity about the PET test, what is the application of it, what are the data requirements for it and how to perform that using Microsoft Excel. Let's learn another important concepts as a part of this continuous learning into the next video. At the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you're not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.